show that z1 which is 1 plus i and z2 is minus 1 minus i are both roots of this equation. So let's the first step and then you have to write the other roots. So let's write the equation. So z to the power of 4 plus 4 is equal to 0 is the equation. So I can say this implies z to the power of 4 is equal to negative 4. Now, how would you write this in a polar form? So let me give you an understanding. Suppose this is your imaginary arm and this is a real arm. This is real and this is imaginary. So negative 4 is say, yeah, this is negative 4. So what is, how would you write this in polar form? Well, polar form is basically ask answering the question how far away from the origin this is your origin so well this is four up four away from the origin and what is this angle from this positive arm of the x-axis so this is 180 degree so the same negative four in polar form is is four cis 180 forces 180 is the polar form of negative 4. So I can say well z to the power of 4 is same as writing 4 cis 180. Okay now those who know how to do the rest you can do it. Yeah, you're going to use the Dimbois theorem. Okay so z1 I can write as I'm raising both sides by a quarter so z if I raise this by one quarter, I have to raise the other side also by a quarter. So for this, 180 to the power one quarter. So I can say Z1 is going to be uh, this. Of course, this is Z. Okay, so I'm not repeating this. So this becomes, using the Dimbois theorem, so this is 4 raised to 1 quarter, cis 180 times quarter. So this is this is the Dimbois theorem. You raise the modulus by the power and multiply the argument by the power. So z1, z4 to the power 1 quarter, I hope you understand this is 2 squared to the power quarter, cis 45. Okay, so what is this? So this is z1 is this is 2 raised to half that's going to be square root of 2 cis 45. So let's understand this. What does this mean? This means, so let me draw suppose again the real, real and the imaginary arm. So this is your real arm and this is your imaginary arm. So where is z1? z1 is at a distance of root 2 so this is not drawn to scale so this is root 2 and at an angle of 45 so let's use basic trigonometry or Sokatoa if this is 45 and this is root 2 how much should be this side and this side well you can understand this is going to be equal to this because it's a 45 degree right angle triangle so if this is if this is x, say, say this is x and this is y, one thing you can understand is x is going to be equal to y. So now can I say x squared plus y squared is equal to 2 using simple Pythagoras. So now we know x is equal to y because it's a right angle isosceles triangle. So I can say 2x squared is equal to 2. So I hope you understand x is going to be x is equal to y is equal to 1. So or even without doing any of this, you should be able to understand if this is root 2, this has to be 1 and this has to be 1. And using Pythagoras, you can understand this is square root of 2. So, so what does this mean? So this is the complex. This is your z1. z1 is z1 is root 2 is at a distance of root 2 and an angle of 45 from the positive arm of the x-axis. 
So this is polar form. The same thing, if you want to write in the rectangular form, this is 1 and this is also 1. So this is i. I hope you understand on this. This is i. So this z1 can also be written as 1 plus i. This is same as writing 1 plus i. Okay, and I, I hope you know the geometry of roots. The roots are always in a conjugate pair. Okay, so if you have got one root as 1 plus i, okay, uh, let's write both form in polar and rectangular form. So z2 in polar form would be at the same distance of root 2 cis uh, 90 adding to this because the other root was going to be here. So this is going to be your C2. This is the third root. And this is the fourth root. Basically, you can draw a circle. So basically, they all are on a circle. This is not a good circle. I hope you understand. So this is Z1, Z2, Z3. And this is Z4. They're all at an angle of, sorry, all at a distance of root 2. And at an angle of 90 from each other. So you can say this is right angle, this is right angle, because there are four roots. So if you add 90, this is 135. And if you write this in, in rectangular form, this is going to be minus 1, minus 1 plus i. OK, so z3, you add 90 to this. So this is root 2 cis. If you add 90, this is going to be 225, 225 degrees, which is this angle. This is Z3, and that is, this is minus 1, minus I. I hope you see the geometry, minus 1, minus I, and Z4 is going to be root 2, cis 315, cis 315, which is plus 1, plus I minus i. So let me rewrite this. So z1, this is your z1. This z2, this is z2, sorry. This is z2, this is z3, and this is z4. So z2 is at, if you want to write this in rectangular form, this is minus 1, and this is, this is minus 1, and this is i. Okay, and this is minus 1, minus i. And this point is plus 1 minus i. OK, so this is, let me redraw this properly. So basically, if you want to draw all the four roots, they are on a circle. So let me draw a good circle. So these are the four points. So at an angle of 45. So this is 45 here. So this is z1. So z1 you can refer as plus 1 plus i or root 2 cis 45. The other root is at an angle of 90, so this is z2, which is root 2 cis 135. Or uh, from this angle, if you go, if you can see, this angle is going to be 45. Okay, so this is z3, and this is z4, and this is called the Argand diagram. Okay, so this is the real arm, and this is the imaginary arm. Okay, or uh, just from these, if you think in a different way, the four roots you can just write from this. If z1 is 1 plus i, the other conjugate pair is going to be 1 minus i. If z2 is minus 1 minus i, the other conjugate pair is minus 1 plus i. So the four roots are at an angle of 90 from each other and at a radial distance of root 2.